In this lecture, I'll be covering upper bound, lower bound, and least upper bound and greatest lower bound, also called as supremum and infimum. Suppose we have a partial order P and a subset Q. And the elements which belong to P, let's call them as Y. And elements which belongs to Q, let's call them X. Now for every X, if Y is always lower than or equal to X, then this Y is called a lower bound. On the same lines, for every X, if Y is always greater than or equal to X, then it is called the upper bound. Let's take an example to understand this. So here we have a partial order M, which has the elements 2, 3, 6, 12, 24, and 36. And we have another partial order n, which has 6 and 12. And this n is a subset of m. Uh, you can clearly see it's over here. Now, for this, we need to find the upper bounds and the lower bounds. So, so let's start with the lower bounds. Lower bound says that uh, you can pick up any element from P, it should always be less than or equal to any element belonging to the cube. So let's start with the lowest level because we are talking about lower bounds. So 2, is it less than 6? Yes, it is. Is 2 less than 12? Yes. So I can include 2. How about 3? Yeah, 3 is lower than 6 and even 12. So even 3 can be included. Now how about 6? We already know that partial order is reflexive. So it can be compared to itself and it satisfies. So 6 is less than or equal to itself and it is less than or equal to 12. So even 6 can be included. Now how about 12? 12 is less than or equal to itself, but it is not less than or equal to 6. Therefore condition fails and we cannot include this. And the same for 12 and 36. Therefore we have only three lower bounds, that is 2, 3 and 6. On the same lines, if you think of upper bounds, let's start from the top. 36 is greater than or equal to 12 as well as 6, therefore 36 can be included. Even 24 is greater than or equal to all the elements, that's included. How about 12? 12 is greater than or equal to itself and it is greater than or equal to 6, therefore 12 is also included. And the condition fails over here, therefore we do not include this and that's it. So these are the lower bounds and these are the upper bounds. Now what it really means is, so if you pick up any subset, the boundaries for that particular set are basically your lower bounds and upper bounds. So for this, anything which falls below will be into the lower bound and if at all, if it has a least element, even that will be included. And for upper bounds, anything which falls above this subset will be taken into upper bounds and if it has a greatest element, even that can be included. Let's try one more. So here we have x which has elements 2, 4, 8, 12 and 24 and we have y which is 4, 8 and 12 and this is a subset of this. We can see it over here. Now let's find the lower bounds and upper bounds. So lower bound, so anything falls below this can be taken. So 2 is below this so I can take 2. How about 4? Four? 4 is the least element so even 4 can be included. What about upper bounds? So 24 is falling above the rest of things. So 24 will be there. How about 12? Though it is greater than 4, it cannot be compared with 8. Therefore 12 can't be included. Same for the 8. 8 is greater than 4, but it cannot be compared to this. Therefore we don't include this. Or simply, uh, if you don't find the greatest element or maybe the least element, you need not worry about the elements inside this. So we can simply close this. Let's further classify upper bounds and lower bounds. For that, let me take an example. Here we have P, which has the elements X, Y, Z, A, B, and C. And there's one more uh, partial order Q, which has A and Z. 
Q is a subset of this. Uh, you can clearly see A and Z over here. Now, if you think of the lower bounds, we have these elements as the lower bounds. So, which include X, Y, and Z. How about the upper bounds? These are the ones which are A, B, and C. Here we don't have one lower bound, rather we have three and there are three upper bounds. Out of these lower bounds, there is one such lower bound which is closest to this. Or out of all the lower elements, I could say this is the greatest of all the lower elements. Here we come up with a new terminology. In the lower bounds, we can pick up the element which is very much close to the subset and this is called the greatest low bound sometimes written as uh, glb and it's also called infimum on the same lines in the upper bounds we can pick up the one which is very much close to the subset this is called lowest upper bound sometimes written as lub and sometimes referred as supremum it is not always guaranteed that there will be a lowest upper bound or greatest lower bound but if at all if they exist they are always unique that means only one element will be the glb and one element will be uh, lub if they exist let's try a few examples to identify them so here we have p with elements 1 2 3 6 12 24 and 36 and for this p we have a subset q there's a subset r and the subset s let's try to find the lower bounds and upper bounds for these and we'll also see if they have the lub and glb let's start with q so the lower bounds will be anything below 6 so i could include 1 2 3 and even 6 because that is the least element how about the upper bounds for 12 it's 24 36 and even 12 can be taken because that's the greatest element in this 6 is the greatest lower bound and 12 will become the lowest upper bound now for r the lower bounds will be 1 and we cannot pick up 2 and 3 because these are incomparable how about upper bounds 6 is the greatest element so it can be taken and every other element which is above it can be taken so we have 6 12 24 and 36 we have only one element so this itself is your glb and this will become the lowest upper bound now how about s the lower bounds for 6 is same as this so we could include 1 2 3 and 6 the upper bounds if you see 24 and 36 these are incomparable so anything above this can be taken but here there is no element which is above this so there are actually no upper bounds so when there are no upper bounds there won't be any least upper bound so no least upper bound but we have the greatest lower bound which is 6